The president of Tokyo Electric Power Company has apologized for the problems caused by the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. TEPCO president Toshio Nishizawa visited the damaged plant on Sunday. After offering a minute of silence, he apologized in a speech that was relayed to the company's headquarters in Tokyo. We apologize for the serious trouble and concern the Fukushima Daiichi accident has caused for the people who lived near the plant and those in Fukushima and across the country. The company will make sincere efforts to swiftly and appropriately compensate them for the damage. Nishizawa pledged continued efforts to keep the crippled plant under control and to take the necessary steps, including the decommissioning of the reactors. God damn. There's going to be nobody there. Like, uh, basically, Japan is gone. Like, people don't even understand that shit. That shit, you can't live there. Key details relating to the nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant are still unknown, even one year after the crisis occurred. Nuclear fuel melted at the number one, two and three reactors of the plant following the quake and tsunami. The plant operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, took various measures to cool the reactors and contain the release of radioactive material. Those efforts have made the situation more stable now compared to soon after the accident. But the accident forced many people to evacuate. It also seriously affected Japan's entire society and economy. Study teams of TEPCO, the Japanese government and private groups looked into why the nuclear disaster happened. They have revealed insufficient measures against tsunami and inadequate responses at the time of the accident. But details remain unclear. The unknown information includes from which part of the plant the large amount of radioactive material was released and how much material spread in the air or into the sea. Another core item still unconfirmed is the impact of the quake on the plant. TEPCO says the earthquake itself did not affect major safety facilities and equipment, but the high radioactivity at the site does not allow workers to confirm the claim. For many Japanese, it's hard not to be angry at this. The ferocious force of the earth unleashed a more fearsome one, a series of horrific events at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Officials say the facility now is under control, but just last month we learned it came closer to total meltdown than anyone knew except for a handful of government and company officials. Things have changed dramatically in how people view the government. Trust in the powers that be has eroded dramatically, and this is unusual in Japan. The Japanese government has launched a $235 billion five-year project to reconstruct this coastline. But no one who sees this, and certainly no one who lives here, can believe that's nearly enough money or enough time to bring this region back. As Japan marks one year since a devastating earthquake and tsunami killed over 19,000 people, uh, devastating an entire nation. A minute's silence has been observed at the exact moment the quake hit last March. Uh, the tsunami turned whole neighborhoods into debris, uh, leaving hundreds of thousands of people homeless. It also triggered the worst nuclear crisis in a quarter century after the cooling systems at the Fukushima plant were knocked out. Well, for more on the risks of contamination the plant poses today, I'm now joined by Dr. Robert Jacobs, a professor of nuclear history uh, and culture at the Hiroshima Peace Institute. Thank you for coming on RT today. So one year on, has the government dealt with the nuclear crisis effectively? And can you tell us what is the current situation on the ground? Um, the government has been in crisis mode for a year and it remains in crisis mode. Uh, at this point it is simply trying to stop the entry of uh, radioactive particles into the environment which is not successful. There's still radiation coming into the sea, into the groundwater and some being released into the air. So at this point the government is simply trying to put a lid on the plants uh, but it's only uh, it, it's nowhere near planning any way to deal with the 
radiation contamination uh, or also to get the plants into a safe place. They say that they're in cold shutdown, but in essence, the plants are still leaching radiation and they're still uncertain of the condition inside the reactors. So as you say, there are still concerns about radiation contamination and leaks ongoing, but the Japanese Red Cross has said that the government has wasted the entire year and is still failing to work out a viable plan on how to rebuild the affected areas. As some would call that extreme negligence. Why is that? It's partly because the nuclear crisis is ongoing and chaotic. Um, after the earthquake uh, in the Osaka area, the government was able to rebuild quickly because they could focus directly on it. But in this case, the government has a much uh, an ongoing disastrous problem, which is keeping it preoccupied so that it's not able to simply attend to the rebuilding. Now, uh, when, the, when the disaster struck, the Japanese people were admired uh, as, as a nation of dignity and strength. And now it seems to some that it could be just a nation of distrust. Because of the nuclear crisis, they don't trust their government now. Uh, the, the food they eat or the water they drink, uh, how hard do you think is the psychological burden of the tragedy on the people there? The psychological burden on the people is brutal and on the people who remain in the contaminated areas and the people who've been evacuated who will likely never return to their homes uh... the psychological burdens are intensely brutal these people have been betrayed in repeated ways they were betrayed by being lied to that nuclear power could never have a problem that these kind of accidents don't happen then when the accident did happen it was hidden from them for three months that there were meltdowns there were lies for three months that there were meltdowns they were not told where the contamination and plumes uh, from the explosions were going um, so these people have been lied to repeatedly now they've had their lives pulled apart and they're full of worry and anxiety over the health and welfare of themselves and their children and their families. And I would just add that on top of that, uh, people who defend the nuclear industry are now blaming them for their own health problems and saying that the health problems are the result of anxiety and stress. Well, even if that were the case, this anxiety and stress has been produced by the nuclear industry and by the actions of the government. But assuming the worst, which is that they do have reason to fear from the contamination, uh, these people have been treated brutally. And unfortunately for communities exposed to radiation, this is typical behavior. What happens is that the exposure is the initial victimization, but then they themselves are blamed for having disastrous responses to it, having stressful responses to it, and even health problems and depression that can come with it. So there needs to be mental health services in place, and there needs to be honesty, and there needs to be transparency transparency uh, for these people. Obviously, you know, the issues at stake, not just the short-term issues, but more importantly, the long-term issues. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated because I believe that you must know what I know as president. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated because I believe that you must know what I know as president.
God damn. There's going to be nobody there. Like, uh, basically, Japan is gone. Like, people don't even understand that shit. That shit, you can't live there. You know what I'm saying? And they, when the shit happened, it, it, it was troops there. And they sent the troops fucking right back home. Like, that shit is here already. Like, they nuked the whole fucking planet. I hope you don't fucking know. Just like the water, BP, they... They put oil in all the water, you know what I'm saying? Like, shh. This is something, I mean, some demonic shit going on, man. Demonic. 200 million gallons of fucking oil into the motherfucking ocean. I still see motherfuckers buying gas from BP. <laughs> What the fuck? It's like, yo, you literally living amongst straight zombies. All that radiation in Japan and, and the fucking sushi spot is popping. You know what I mean? Like, ah, man. They caught us, though. That shit was a bomb. They said the the building was just the whole the plant was a bomb. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they built that shit to be a bomb. Like right on the water, and you nuked the whole fucking plant. Like everywhere is radiating. Especially California. I don't, and people just. Watch some cable or some shit. Start watching Prison Wives or some crazy shit. Forget about everything. Forget about everything. They nuked us. Do all kinds of oil in the water. Say something about it. You're a conspiracy theorist. Right now, you know what I mean? I'm just, this is common sense, logic, this radical thinking in today's, today's times. But, you know, that's what the sheep will want. They want insanity. They want motherfucking the Super Bowl, the playoffs, the All-Star game, the slam dunk contest, and all that shit. I don't want to hear about fucking shit every time you, you, there's no more such thing as fresh air, you know what I mean? We radiated. I mean, about to see some fucking mutants or some shit. There's mutants out there already. <laughs> Mutated motherfuckers, man. Man, if it, and if it wasn't for all the zombies, I don't really. Shit wouldn't be like this, man. Y'all fucking it up for everybody. Making the motherfuckers who think the crazy ones. We ain't fucking crazy, y'all crazy, man. I swear everybody making all these fucking videos and shit and all that. They like, fuck it. <laughs> 